Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been prophes prophesied in 4,000 old scriptures of Hinduism, Vedas and uh, the uh, uh, Puranas. Therefore, Dr. Zakir Naik, you believe that these books are God sent, and therefore Hindus are also Ahle Kitab? The brothers asked a very good question that since Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has prophesied in the Vedas and the other Hindu scriptures, can we consider these scriptures to be the word of God? And can we call them Ahle Kitab? But the Ahle Kitab, as I mentioned in my talk, it's a word used for people of the book, specifically referring to the Jews and Christians. Ahle Kitab refers to Jews and Christians. Regarding your question, that can we consider Vedas or the other Hindu scriptures the word of God? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Rath, chapter number 13, verse number 38, in every age have we sent a revelation, but by name only four revelations are mentioned in the Quran. Torah, Zabur, Injil, and the Quran. Torah is the wahi which was revealed to Prophet Moses, peace be upon him. Zabur is the wahi which was revealed to Prophet David, peace be upon him. Injil is the wahi which was revealed to Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him. And Quran is the last and final revelation revealed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Now, all these revelations that were revealed they were revealed only for those people and that time. All revelations before the Quran were revealed for those people and that time. Quran was revealed for the whole of humankind. Your question, can we consider Veda or the Hindu scripture with the word of God? Since the Vedas are not mentioned by name in the Quran, we cannot say for sure that they were the word of God. What we can say, maybe they were the word of God. You ask me. Since Allah has sent various messengers, can we consider Ram or Lakshman as the messenger of God? See, Allah says he has sent several revelations on the face of the earth. He has sent several messengers. Since Veda is not mentioned in the Quran to be the word of God, I can say maybe the word of God. I cannot say for sure. Similarly, neither can I say that Ram or Krishna are the messengers of God. I can say maybe they were. Since they are not mentioned by name, I cannot say that for sure they were. Maybe. But even if Ram was the messenger of God, even if Krishna was the messenger of God, even if Veda was the word of God, they were meant for those people and for that time. Today, whichever part of the world you are living in, you should follow the last and final revelation that the glorious Quran and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which is even mentioned in the Hindu scriptures as Ante Mautar. The next question from the slip is uh, Brother Amar Sinha. He has asked, you promote interfaith dialogues in this, do you agree with those who say all the religions are same? Well, that was the question that since I promote interfaith dialogue, do I agree with those people who say that all religions are same? There are various interfaith dialogue going on throughout the world, even in Bombay, and we find that religious personalities of various religions come on the stage and say all religions are the same. A Hindu personality comes, a religious leader, and says, all religions are the same. A Muslim personality comes and says, all religions are the same. A Christian personality comes and says, all religions are the same. I ask them a simple question. That if you agree, all religions are the same, then will a Christian priest give up Christianity and will he become a Muslim? Will a Muslim person give up Islam and will he become a Hindu? Will a Hindu priest give up Hinduism and will he become a Christian? The answer is no. These people, they try and portray an image of being secular. They scratch each other's back. It's like a student asking a teacher that 2 plus 2 is equal to how much? Is 2 plus 2 is equal to 3? Or is it equal to 4? Or is it equal to 5? Three teachers come on the stage and say, all three answers are correct. 2 plus 2 is equal to 3 also, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 also, and 2 plus 2 is equal to 5 also. This is nothing but garbage. I, being a student of Islam and comparative religion, I have read the various scriptures. I know the practices of the various religions are not the same. I believe in communal harmony. I believe in interfaith dialogue. What I say, if we make an assumption, that let's assume that at least amongst all the various scriptures, various religions, at least one scripture is 100% authentic, the word of God. Now, this assumption 
no religious personality would object to. I would not mind accepting at least one of the religious scripture as being the word of God. The Christian would say, fine, at least one means, at least Bible is the word of God. The Hindu will say, no problem, at least the Veda is the word of God. The Muslim will say, no problem, at least Quran is the word of God. Now what you do, you collect all the hundreds of teachings from the Christian Bible, from the Hindu scripture, the Veda, and from Islam, the Quran. Now you find the commonalities. Suppose 50 are common. Now when we take out 50 commonalities, the teachings from all these religious scriptures, everyone will at least agree that this portion of the various scriptures at least is surely the word of God. And no one would object implementing it because it is present in all the scriptures. This technique of communal harmony is based on the Quranic verse of Surah Al-Imran, chapter 3, verse 64, which says, Ta'ala wila kalmitin sawa in bayna baynakum. Come to common terms as been asked in you. There may be other differences. There may be other differences in the religions. I can give a talk even on differences between Islam and Hinduism. But since they're coming on commonalities, no one would object on following the commonalities because it is present in all the religious scripture. There may be some people who may not be well versed of the scripture. They may sometimes be offended. For example, if I point out that all the religious scripture, whether the Bible, whether the Veda, whether the Quran, says they should not do idol worship. Now, since he's not aware of the Vedas, he may feel offended, but yet he will not go against me. Because if he goes against me, he's going against the Veda, which he considers the word of God. So this is the best way for interfaith dialogue and communal harmony that come to common terms as between us and you. Hope that answers the question. Yes, sir, brother. Uh, my name is Mubin Solkar, and I'm a lawyer by profession. Uh, before I put in my question, I must say, sir, that I'm really impressed by your knowledge of Hindu scriptures. It's really amazing. My question to you is that you've said that there are so many similarities between Islam and Hinduism. Does that mean that according to Islam, a person can be a Hindu? The brother asked a very critical question that since I've pointed so many similarities between Islam and Hinduism, does it mean that according to Islam, a person can be a Hindu brother? If by the term Hindu you mean a geographical definition, a person who lives in India, then according to Islam, there's no problem in a person being an Indian. I am an Indian and I'm a practicing Muslim. I'm proud of my country, India, and I'm proud to be a Muslim. So no problem in Islam if you are an Indian and practicing Islam. But if you mean by the term Hindu, a person who follows the religious scriptures of Hinduism, then I've got no objection as long as that Hindu strictly follows the established truths of the scriptures of Hinduism. What do I mean by established truth? Established truth means those truths mentioned in the Hindu scriptures which have been reconfirmed by the last and final revelation of God, that is the glorious Quran. And I'm referring to Vedas and the Quran, which I talked in my lecture. Both of them, they believe that there's one God. They believe in the messengers. They believe the last messenger, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They believe in the hereafter. If they believe in all these established facts, I've got no objection. But if you tell me, no, a Hindu is a person who believes in everything what is mentioned in the scriptures, then I, being a student of compassion religion, I don't agree. Why? It's not possible for a Hindu to believe in all the teachings in the Hindu scriptures, because many a time the teachings of different scriptures of Hinduism, they contradict. Many a time the same scriptures, Rigved, they contradict themselves. Manu Smith, they contradict themselves. For example, one place it says that you should not have pope. One place it says that you should have pope. So person cannot follow contradicting statements simultaneously. So what we have to realize, that even in the Hindu scripture, certain things that are unethical, as spoken by the great reformers, they believe in caste system, which Raja Ram Mohan Roy, Justice Ryan Day spoke against. They spoke against the Sati system, that the wife should burn in the funeral pyre of the husband. So these things a person cannot follow. That's the reason I say that as long as the Hindu follows the established fact and also agrees that there is one last Rishi, Antim Rishi. When Buddha came and he tried to purify Hinduism of the superstition, many people went against him. Then how come he's coming to purify the Vedas? Later on, they agreed that he was the 23rd of the 24 avatars. 
They even agree that he was the ninth avatar of Vishnu. Similarly, when you read the scripture, it talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the 24th avatar. He is the 10th avatar of Vishnu. He is the Antim Rishi. So if the Hindu believes in the established facts, believes in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the messenger of God, believes in one God, believes in the hereafter, there is no problem in him being a Hindu. Just a minute as I close the program. Though Dr. Zakir would love to answer questions, I think for another one, two, three, four hours, the rules here do not permit us to continue. I have got a finite ultimatum to close the program. If you have any further questions on the topic or on Islam or on comparative religion, you are most welcome to get in touch with the IRF or attend our lectures followed by open question and answer sessions which we have after any kind of lecture on Saturday at 4 p.m., every Sunday at 10.30 p.m. for gents and on Monday for ladies at 3 p.m. Those who have not filled up the guest registration slip are kindly requested to do so at the registration counter while leaving so that you can be in touch and we may be able to inform you of our program. Lastly, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making this program possible. On behalf of the IRF and our organizing committees, I thank all our guests, the press, and all the professionals who are involved in the running of this program, as well as our staff and volunteers, and all persons who have helped us in making this program successful, especially with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum.